Creating lots of power or force in your tennis swings doesn't have to be hard. In fact, it should feel relatively effortless if you use your body correctly the way that it's supposed to in the correct order. So here's some drills that you can do at home. You don't even have to be on a tennis court to do this to start engaging your entire body and in particular the kind of the biggest, strongest parts of your body in the correct order to start getting the energy flowing a little bit more smoothly and effortlessly. So here's a couple drill progressions. The first one, all you need to do is stand next to a wall. And you just need a couple feet of space. And first, what I want you to do is stand like eight or 10 inches away from the wall and try to standing uh, upright and straight next to the wall, eight or 10 inches away, just try to exert as much force as you possibly can against the wall. And you can kind of brace yourself, you can, you can push, but with that little amount of room, all you can really do is engage some of the smaller parts of your body. You, you, you'll feel that most of the big, strong parts of your body aren't really contributing to the effort or the force against the wall. Then I want you to take a full step away from the wall. So you're like two or three feet away from the wall. And this time kind of brace yourself and get into an athletic stance and then put yourself against the wall and now push and give as much force or energy into the wall as you can. Just in a you know, gentle, no need to like throw yourself uh, towards the wall. Just feel the difference now that your, your legs are engaged and more of your torso is engaged to be able to deliver energy against the wall. Feel how much more force there is that's available to you. And that's, this is just a, a quick little kind of feel exercise to illustrate the point that when your whole body gets engaged, and in particular when your lower body and your torso is involved, you can deliver much more energy without necessarily feeling like you're working or trying a lot harder. Don't be tempted to think that the little wall exercise is like silly or, or goofy or like doesn't have any application. I see tennis players all the time that are doing the first version of the, the wall push and just using the small parts of their body to hit the tennis ball. This is why getting the whole body incorporated in the right order is important. So now let's talk about in the right order. So three exercises you can do here to practice this. Uh, first of all, just grab a tennis racket and just stand uh, with your feet shoulder width apart. Put the racket in between your hands and just extend your hands forwards and your arms forwards so your racket's right in front of you. And now from this neutral, just kind of standing position with your, your feet shoulder width apart, turn your hips to the right without your racket moving. So that looks like this. So just my hips are turning to the right. And so what I'm feeling here is a stretch in my left kind of shoulder blade area, also a little bit my right hip area. And that's because I'm turning one of the biggest, strongest parts of my body independent of my stance or the plane of my shoulders. And so I'm creating a stretch here and I'm activating a big, strong part of my body on its own. And then after you do that a couple times, go ahead and rotate to the left. And so just my, my hips are turning to the left and then returning back to neutral. Uh, so now I'm feeling that stretch in my right shoulder blade. You might feel it in a different place, but I feel a stretch in my, my right shoulder blade and a little bit in my, my left hip, uh, a little bit in my right knee as well. And so that's my, my hip, again, independently moving, as opposed to your whole body going in one big chunk. And that would be kind of step two. Like step one for tennis players is just using the arm to hit the ball. You see that swing all the time, uh, turning to the side, seeing the ball come, and then just hitting with the, the arm. Step two would be turning to the side and the whole body turning forwards. That's a whole lot better than nothing. But phase three is having the body move in the right sequence so that you can flow energy up and out through your racket. And that means your hips turning first and then your shoulders following. So now step number two here is going to be turning the hips to the right and then allowing the chest and the racket to follow. So now my hips and my chest are in alignment again and I don't feel that big stretch on my back anymore. So now I'll turn my hips to the left and then allow my torso to turn to meet my hips to the right and then release and to the left 
and then release. So the application here, what we're trying to do is, is basically isolate or move independently the lower part of the body and then the upper part of the body. Because when the ball is coming towards us, the most powerful way to deliver energy into the ball is to first turn the hips and then turn the chest and the upper body. And in real life, it, it's not actually you know, segmented and like step one and then step two, it's, there's a flow to it and it's more dynamic. But after you've done uh, this progression a couple times, you've turned your hips and then released your, your upper body, go ahead and practice getting yourself into an athletic stance, turning your hips and then turning your body, turn your hips and then turn your body. And then have, uh, you can just drop a ball to yourself or you can have somebody toss to you or if you have a great ball machine like this, uh, go ahead and have it feed, get into a stance, turn your hips and then turn your upper body. Hips and then upper body. Turn, hips and then upper body. And when you look at slow motion footage of the most elite highest performance players in the world, this is the order that you'll see their body moving in. On ground strokes, on their serve, on their forehands, even sometimes on, on volleys, um, oftentimes on volleys, you'll see the feet kind of lead and the upper body following. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this little progression that you can do at home helps kind of bring a little bit more awareness to how your body is moving. And hopefully you can start to apply it to your game on the courts as well. If you enjoyed watching this lesson, then please consider going to order my book called Essential Tennis. You can get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or anywhere else books are sold. And you can get it in paperback, hardcover, audiobook, or Kindle as well. And it's full of 38 chapters full of tennis insights for doubles players, singles players, that really get down to the core essentials of how to play better tennis. It's received some incredible feedback from world-class players and coaches which I'm super grateful for. So if you enjoy my lessons and this one in particular, which is taken right from the book, then definitely go check it out and order yours today. Thank you so much for your support.